All right, welcome back to the business news here on Switch to Linux. This is recorded Friday, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to catch these live. This is the business section here. We have uh, several exciting articles uh, today, and we're going to start out with uh, an affiliate, InMotion Hosting. If you need to host your website, consider using InMotion Hosting. There will be a link uh, in the description down below. So you can have a look at that, and uh, that would help support the channel. So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and uh, look at some business news. Now, of course, last uh, last week, I think Philadelphia passed a regulation. Uh, Philadelphia passed a regulation that uh, banned stores that did not take cash outside of a few weird and random circumstances. I think uh, garages, which didn't make sense to me. Um, but also like car rentals, super high end type stuff like that generally would not. The reason is, is Amazon was looking at putting an Amazon Go store into there. Of course, with that, you need to use your, your smartphone. They don't take cash. You just go in. And the problem is with these types of stores is it, it tends to crowd out the other stores, damages the other local economy, and then hurts the people who are not banked people. People that, uh, people that don't have bank accounts and credit cards and cards attached to their Amazon account. And the thing is, is that on Amazon, you can buy things on Amazon with cash, but you can't use that method in an Amazon Go store. It won't let you in unless you have an actual credit card attached to the account, which I think is pretty much ri ridiculous. But uh, New Jersey um, passes a law that stores and restaurants must accept cash. This is actually interesting. There is a lawyer, I don't remember his name, but he has a YouTube channel. And he actually addressed this not long ago that, uh, you know, does a business have to take cash? And overall, federally, no. Only if your state has a law. Now, I think the other state, uh, New Jersey's the second state. There's another state. It might be Virginia, but I can't remember for sure. Um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania had a provision that allowed a jurisdiction to do that, and that's what Philadelphia used. But New Jersey actually signed in a law saying restaurants and stores must accept cash, which is kind of a cool thing. And I like this because I'm a cash guy. Credit cards definitely hurt our society. Debit cards, they're not as bad at credit cards, but you're still spending on plastic and you don't feel the emotional experience of spending money. And so I don't like that option quite as much either. The But using cash, you know what you're spending, you know what you have. And this is, this is really good, especially companies like Visa have been offering businesses like 500 bucks if they only accept credit cards and not cash at their businesses. So this goes, this is kind of a strike against that thing as well. But this is a very good thing. And this is going to be what preserves our society from the great old mark of the beast, as it were, when everyone's getting to this point where, oh, you have to use credit cards. I don't want to use credit cards. I don't want to use debit cards. I want to use cash. And when I can't use cash, I don't buy at your store. So that's kind of that's kind of a neat thing. So of course this is coming into into law because of these Amazon Go stores um, and other stores that are trying to do other weird things to get people to use the exclusively use the you know Amazon Pay or Samsung Pay or uh, Apple Pay. I think that was Apple Pay, not Amazon Pay. Actually, Amazon does have an Amazon Pay technically as well, though. Um, they're trying to combat stores from going exclusively to these models. They're not saying you can't use a credit card. They're saying you have to provide the option to accept cash. And uh, different people have different views about this. Um, I think this is a good thing because it preserves that degree of um, that degree of sanity in our society where we actually know what's going on with our money and with our finances. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, T-Mobile, so T-Mobile is looking at this merger with Sprint and though they're promising, yeah, we believe them. They're promising that if this merger goes through, then up to 50,000 homes this year, that's like, no, nothing by the way, uh, but 50,000 homes this year will get access to, better access to their 
LTE home-based internet, basically 4G speeds. Now they say it does fall under priority below the regular cell phones. So if there's a lot of cell phone traffic in that area, then the home speeds will meter down a little bit to provide preference for the cell phones. But this plan is set there to, to provide decent internet back in the sticks, which frankly, frankly, this is an okay thing. Um, just like I have a friend that lives just a couple miles out the way here. And uh, I go down there, their internet is so stinking slow, I can barely work off of it. That's one of the best internets they have. But if I bring my cell phone and connect on my wireless hotspot, I get 80 Mbps from my cell phone. <laughs> so that's kind of an interesting thing, right? <laughs> interesting thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is this is to me a, a kind of a good thing that that they're looking at this. It's I don't like the fact that they're teasing, oh, if this merger is allowed to happen, we're going to do this because frankly, it's 0.04% of US households, not exactly a significant quantity, but you know. All right, on to Tesla. You guys remember that Tesla likes to drive full speed into parked fire trucks and the side road barriers and all this kind of stuff, even leading to a bad crash that killed people. In fact, Teslas have crashed into the side barriers countless amount of times. Well, it turns out that this Reddit user um, has been keeping an eye on this and trying to reach out to Tesla multiple times after his car keeps on wanting to steer towards a barrier. And they haven't really done much. And then they've done software patches and then it seems to correct itself. And then after another software patch, it seems to reverse itself. And so these Teslas keep on going and it's like, this is why we don't want cars to keep on auto downloading stuff from the internet. Because what this guy did is he decided that he would go ahead and record some video. So this one is from December 2018. And uh, he goes to record his video. So you can see him going for a lane change. And Liz Tussle's like, I want to go for that. So he actually grabs the wheel and turns himself to the side. So he said after an update, it seemed to correct itself. Um, but then, um, let's see, it works fine. After six months, works fine. Uh, 515? I'm, is this 315? Not 515? I'm not sure. Yeah, it must be 315 because his date down here on his dash cam is 35. So he's driving the same section. So he's going down here and he's basically testing what it's doing. And there's the Tesla it wants to go for it again, allegedly. I don't know if he's intentionally steering it to make them look bad, but, uh, he, he is definitely uh, he is definitely taking control back after the Tesla just really really wants to uh, go uh, go for that thing. So here it goes again. Whoa! <laughs> oh Lord! And we're gonna trust these cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I want to sign me up to ride in a Tesla. Imagine these things auto driving themselves. No! 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 A thousand times no! Get us out of these cars! People, keep the AI out of the vehicles! Stop updating our vehicles over the air! You're trying to kill us! You're trying to kill us! Tesla is going to kill us all! They're gonna kill us all! <laughs> Stop giving us over the air updates! Stop changing your software! And don't put in stuff that wants to drive towards black and yellow horizontally striped things! That's going to kill us! Oh lord! Oh lord! Yeah, yeah. Of course, Windows, uh, Windows 10, 1903 heads for the finish line. Uh, this is probably going to be a bigger snafu than the last um, Windows update. If you remember that one, you know, the one that was deleting files and stuff. Because, like, deleting my files, all right, man. But don't you dare mess with my PUBG. Apparently, for the last several months, it has been flagged that the anti-cheating software that is used for PUBG and Fortnite actually still does not work with this version of Windows. That is going to thrust itself upon your PC. It still apparently doesn't work. All right. And with that apparently not working, um, they're pushing the software out anyway, and it's still listed as unresolved. It's very sad that this is going to be the thing that causes people to wake up. Like, 
No, you can spy on me all you want, but don't mess with my Fortnite, man. It just demonstrates how weak of a society we actually are. I don't know. What, what do you guys think about that? I'll let me know in the comments down below. Of course, uh, Windows is going to continue to bug you. If you are still running Windows 7 SP1 support notification, th this is why I don't run updates just because there's updates to run. I literally look to see what is going on in the update. Because in a Windows update, if you have automatic updates turned on, then you are, it is actually going to download an update. The update is nothing but a nag screen telling you that Windows 7 support is going to end. This is not an update, Microsoft. This is not an update. This is you putting malware on somebody's computer that they're doing work on the operating system they still really like. And then, bing, a big pop-up's gonna show up on your screen. Ha ha ha, Windows 7 and support's gonna show up soon. That's not an update, Microsoft. That is malware. Stop installing malware on our computers. So, there's no prereqs to apply this update. You don't have to restart. It doesn't do anything. And basically, all it's going to do is it's going to give you a pop-up that simply says, Windows 7 support is ending soon. Guys, Microsoft, you need to stop bugging your users. Stop with all the pop-ups, stop with all the notifications, stop with all the stuff. Give us an operating system that we can turn it on and use our computer in a distraction-free zone. Then, only then, maybe we will come back and start using Microsoft products some more. But this is an update that doesn't update anything. It just installs a nag screen on your computer. Anyone else in the world calls that malware. You guys think, is this malware or is this not malware? Is this useful or is this crap? Let us know in the comments down below.